name is Mrs. Agnes Ikaguchi Onyoku, the mother of Dano Chibikem. I am Mr. Dominic Ikaguchi Onyoku, the father of Daniel Chibike Ikaguchi, who was killed in cold blood on 19th September 2020 by Nigeria police at Elelemo here in Port Harcourt without any justifiable cause. He was my last born son. That boy was the pregnancy with which we left Kano. I, I, I avoided every trouble. I dodged every bullet. I made everything I should do, even things beyond my reach, to make sure that that child was kept safe. But you can see what has happened. After 20 good years, we returned here. Somebody came here and wasted that son for me. It was painful. He was the closest person to the mom. He's a son that uh, his loss made me almost mad. His loss disorganized me. Since his death, I became disoriented. That my son is the one selling fruit. Went to pass to carry my market out is that boy. When customer gathered me, if you see him, you know, range as if machine is using him. Has been doing this for me. Even that Friday, we sold together, we went house together. That Friday midnight, I come out to ease myself. I saw my son lying as if cold. He's catching cold. She was he was catching cold. I went into my house, take a wrapper, cover my son. That the last night I did to him. Early morning, I wanted to go market because we used to leave house six, six thirty. I don't know what took over me. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed till after seven. Then my husband will ask me, "Are you not going to the market?" I said, "I will go." I pray, pray the Psalm ninety one. At any time I pray Psalm ninety one, he says, "I hold the whole world in my hand." I don't know my reason. Then I went to the market. Came back after one. That day. Because this thing took place between 12, 11, 12. <coughs> but according to them, my son gave up around 3 p.m. I came back. I did not see him as usual, but I did not expect him because we just come back from an operation. He just did the operation on either 10 to 11 to August, just a month plus. He never began carry anything heavy or do something heavy. I wanted to enter into my business because I do fry granite my, myself. My granite is always special. I said, if I start this granite, I will not eat today. Let me eat first. So I was about to eat. My husband called my daughter. Why well, I know that something was wrong? When he say, have your mother, mother come back? He say, yes. Where is she? He says, in the other room, eating. So okay, get her from where she was. My daughter enter inside the room. and begin to talk, talk. Now I keep the food by the side. Go look myself for the door. Keep my ear like this. After the, when they end the call, I said, Mommy, what happened? Just tell me. He said, Mommy, don't come. Go eat. I said, I've eaten. Told me, told me what happened. He said, Mommy, nothing happened. He stand. I said, hey, what's in Kennedy, Chibik and Kennedy and uh, Ruben? So tell us, pursue them, shoot gun. I said, hey, <sighs> maybe they don't cut my son's two legs. He said, hey, don't come. No, prophesy negative, uh, positive, no, always negative. I say, okay, nothing happened. Now for air, they shoot the gun. I go sit down. I remember I have 10,000 Naira cash in my hand. I go bring out that 10,000. Give this one 5,000, give him 5,000. Say, when I begin to look for him, wherever I see him, we borrow money, go carry him. They walk up and down, walk up and down, walk up and down. They call. If I call, I see they call my son. I see they call and whether they go allow him to answer me. I don't know that my son is no longer in the land of the living. It's how I see the death of my son because all this going up and at the moment I came back, that happened. I didn't go out again. 
So he back out from that yard and not go out again. I never see place in Cobo say it's market. The one I bought just perished like that. <laughs> and this boy, before the date of this boy, if I told you the kind of amount of money this boy gave me to support the business without me, no type of all this participation that boy they do to make sure he's like other people. See my legs, see my leg. Every time this boy will come and touch me, mommy. Yeah, my first girlfriend, my first wife. This leg will chop money. When this leg chop my money, beware. Mommy, I will renovate you. I will do this, I will do that. Hey! Around 11 o'clock, I felt as if this feeling I'm going to explain to you now also, I had it in the night of that day. Around 1 a.m., I had the feeling that somebody punched me in the chest. I wasn't sleeping. This one I was awake after my midnight prayer. I had the feeling that somebody punched me in the chest. So I shouted in pain and began to pray and say, Oh God, please fight my battle. I don't know what is going on. Around 11 in the day, on that Saturday, this experience repeated. And I was feeling as if my energy was draining. So I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going through. God, please intervene. A few minutes after that prayer, I received a call from my son, Michael, the elder son, who is a, an undergraduate at uh, Futo. He asked me, are you relaxed? The moment he asked me this question, she ran down my spine. I knew that all those experiences I was going through, this is the result. In fact, I was thinking that maybe the mom was, had involved in an accident because she went to market. Then he, I said, I'm relaxed. Speak, I'm listening. He said, um, Daniel and uh, Ruben, I had them, we are together at uh, Lele Mo. Um, SARS pursued them, then there was shooting, and uh, somebody's at the police station now, and uh, someone fell down. I, I said, tell me the truth, what's going on? He says in order now, he's speaking according to the information somebody gave him on phone. I said, okay, thank you. I rushed out because I knew I've already there is trouble. My body had told me that there is trouble. I rushed to a little more police station. The entrance was like a place because I'm used to riots in the north. The entrance showed me that there had been a trouble there. The policemen were on alert. I went in and uh, requested from them whether there had been a case involving Daniel and Ruben that involved shooting. They said, no such a thing. I said, okay. I was about going out. Ruben's mother called me. I, I said, where are you? I said, I'm in uh, Mino, uh, a little more police station. I'm even about going to Mino Kuro. They said, uh, I didn't see any enter of the case here. She said, wait, I'm coming. It is here. She came out. I said, where is Daniel? Where is uh, Ruben? She said, Ruben is in, in handcuffs in the cell. Ruben told her that they killed my son and that they've taken him to mortuary. At that point, I couldn't hold myself. I had to call my daughter my elders that are mourning, and say, please, come out from where your mother is. Come to the police station. That is trouble. She asked me whether I've seen you because I said, no, but come to the police station first. She came to the police station. I told her that they've killed Chibike. Then, as at the time I had this information on rock, I didn't know when I fell down there. I somehow got that myself that if you fell, who are you feeling for? You need to know what is going on. So, by strange willpower, I got myself and stood up again. I asked, where is the DPO? They pointed to one jeep that was there. 
the man inside it. I said, sir, where is my son? Where is my son? He said, I'm taking him to mortuary. I said, you took my son to mortuary without my consent? Without, without my wife's consent? They'll take your own like that. By then, my daughter had come. My daughter, she created one man riot. She could not stand it. There, a few policemen were entering one van. Then we saw that boy, one young boy in chains, out. Neither me nor my daughter knew Ruben personally. So they were asking, Ruben, where is Chibike? He said, these men here have killed Chibike. In fact, if you hear his story from other people, you know that that guy is meant to save lives. This sass now that killed him, if he see where sass am I manipulating or my handling somebody, he says, sir, what is the problem of this young man? What is his offense? He will free the person because he's a very bold human being. And if you see, you hear him talking, you know that there's authority in his voice. So Chibike would have been a superstar. Chibike, because I was training to be a civil engineer, he had already gained his ad admission waiting for all this COVID-19 and all that. See how they wasted him for me. How have I been without Chibike? My life has never been the same. Even throughout last week I was, because the picture is here, I was calling. At times I called the number. I was there when they buried his body, but I was still calling him when he answer me. <laughs> I was still calling his number, whether he could answer me, no way. I will look at him because you see in that picture, it seems as if he's laughing. If he wants to tell me something, I will look and look at him. Any word. My life never be the same. It never be the same since he left me. Though I have other children, but the departure of that boy seems as if 20 people get out of my house. <laughs>